he created a shadow fight, fought 70 rounds, and died in poverty. The story of the first black world boxing champion. On August 10, 1870, Canadian boxer George Dixon was born, who became not only the first black world champion in sports, but also the first holder of titles in two weight classes. Tells about the difficult fate of an athlete who lived only 37 years and made a revolution in boxing. He was introduced to boxing when he worked as a photographer's assistant. Dixon was born in a black community located in the harbor of the city of Halifax, which is located in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia. Between 1878 and 1881, his family moved to Boston, where the future world champion began working as an assistant photographer and became acquainted with boxing. It was there that local boxers posed for promotional photos that served as Dixon's introduction to the sport. George quickly learned and entered the ring as a ready-made professional. He was incredibly fast, defended very well, could easily dodge blows and loop. Dixon was an explosive counterpuncher with quick arms and amazing strength. The first official fight of the boxer took place in 1886 when George was 16 years old. He competed in the bantamweight division. According to unofficial data, having a height of 161 centimeters in the debut fight, he weighed only 39 kilograms. But this did not prevent the young man from winning by knockout in the third round against Young Johnson. First Black Champion In 1888, in Boston, Dixon won the world bantamweight title, gaining a solid 50 kilograms. However, given the lack of structure in the global governing bodies of boxing, other foreign athletes, in particular the Englishman Nunk Wallace, also claimed the title of world champion. In the summer of 1890, Dixon and his manager Tom O'Rourke traveled to England to resolve the dispute. On January 27th, the native of Canada defeated Wallace by knockout in the 19th round and became the undisputed world champion in the category up to 51 kilograms. At the same time, George became the first black fighter to become a world champion in the history of boxing, and perhaps the first black athlete to become a world champion in any sport. He also became the first world champion from Canada. Four months later, Dixon made his first successful title defense. On October 23, 1890, he defeated Johnny Murphy in a brutal and exhausting 40-round bout. As part of the bantamweight division, this title fight turned out to be the longest in the history of boxing. But such confrontations were commonplace for Dixon, and the endurance of Little Chocolate was legendary. 40 rounds was no limit for this black boxer. The meeting with Cal McCarthy lasted 70 rounds, and some rounds lasted up to 4 minutes and 39 seconds, and the boxers performed in gloves that weighed only 2 ounces. The fight lasted for 4 hours and 37 minutes, which corresponds to the 93rd rounds in the modern format. Moreover, according to the results of the meeting, it was not possible to identify the winner. Dixon soon met McCarthy again. After the bantamweight championship, the Canadian set his sights on featherweight, increasing his body weight to 52 kilograms. He vacated the title on 31st of March 1981 and soon defeated McCarthy in the new division, in which he remained for nine years. Boxing historians estimate that Dixon has fought more than 800 amateur and professional fights during his career, but of course, not all of them made it into the official track record. According to the International Boxing Hall of Fame, Dixon retired with a career record of 66 wins, 30 losses, and 57 draws. Racism In the late 19th century, black people were treated no better in the United States than cockroaches. Americans found it amusing to watch their fights, but letting them into educational and medical facilities as well as restaurants or hotels was comparable to populating a pig at home. And we don't know what was worse for them. What can we say? If in 1961, Yuri Gagarin flew around the planet, and in the United States, there was still a debate about the rights of black people. At the end of the 19th century, their situation was much worse, and Dixon, despite his star status, was subjected to cruel racism. During one of the tournaments at the Olympic Club of New Orleans in 1892, Dixon easily dealt with white amateur champion Jack Skelly, breaking his opponent's nose and knocking him out in the eighth round. Due to fears of unrest, the Olympic Club subsequently banned matches between athletes of different races, which further limited the possibilities of black boxers, especially when this practice was adopted at venues across America. One can only guess in what conditions Dixon's family had to live, and in fact, he was married to a white woman, the sister of his manager, Kitty O'Rook. Dixon used his fame as a world champion to help other black boxers. He donated part of the proceedings to their relevant organizations. 
Racism and racial injustice profoundly affected Dixon's personal and professional life, but his popularity and success in the boxing ring gave him a platform to fight discrimination and support black communities. Liberal MP Greg Fergus, Chairman of the Parliamentary Assembly of Blacks. Evolutionary in Boxing Dixon had great agility and was a born athlete, but he was also known as a very intelligent boxer. In 1893, George published a treatise on boxing, in which he detailed his boxing strategies and philosophy of punching, for which he began to be called a pioneer of the scientific approach to boxing. George was known as a fighter with a colossal set of defensive skills that he used in the ring. Little Chocolate created new training methods. For example, he created punches using weights, and also began the practice of working with a heavy pair and a light pair, which was attached to the parquet, laying the foundation for training for future boxers. One of Dixon's main methods of teaching was to strike and then dodge an imaginary opponent. This helped to relax the muscles and create the fighting conditions during training alone. Today, this work is called Shadow Fight, and it is Dixon who is considered its creator. Alcoholism and Death During his career, Dixon earned more than $250,000, which in terms of the current exchange rate is about $8 million. However, George spent the final part of his life in extreme poverty. His last fight was in 1906. Hanging gloves on a nail, the boxer fell into a tenacious vice of alcoholism. As a result, he had to live and beg on the streets of New York. According to Stephen LaFoley's biography, Battle with the Shadow, The Rise and Fall of George Dixon, the former world champion died in 1908 in the alcoholism unit of New York's Bellevue Hospital at the age of 37. His body was interred at Mount Hope Cemetery in Boston. After his death, a memorial fountain was erected in honor of the boxer in New York, but later it was removed due to the construction of the streets. Dixon is an important historical figure in Canada and a representative of the important role of black Canadians in the creation of this nation and its history. Stephen Gwilbalt, Minister of Environment and Climate Change of Canada George Dixon is widely regarded as one of the greatest boxers in history. The ring founder Nat Fleischer named Dixon the number one bantamweight fighter of all time. George became the first athlete to be inducted into the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame, and in 1990, he was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Well friends, that's the end. Subscribe to the channel and expect new original videos every Thursday before meeting.